Let's go on. Now here's one of my more, my, my favorite characters in electronic history, Edwin Howard Armstrong. He was a genius. He lived between 1890 and 1954. He was the inventor of frequency modulation. Um, he worked with Sarnoff, and I'm going to talk about Sarnoff in a little bit. But he came up with a way, Sarnoff said, can you make a way of transmitting radio that isn't as noisy, that sounds better? And all Sarnoff was wanting was a way to improve AM radio transmission that RCA that they were already using already. Armstrong came up with a much better way. He also invented something called the super heterodyne receiver, which is the basis of all modern radio and television receiving apparatus. And so he really is responsible for a lot of the inventions that make radio and television work today, and he was a genius. However, he wasn't, he wasn't that great with business, and he was in a pretty vicious environment. And so even though he was a good inventor, he had a lot of difficulty with his inventions because there was a, a force at work that didn't really want change. They didn't want his system coming in and then changing their model for making money. And we'll go into that in a little bit. But let's talk about the difference between AM and FM. Now, the original type of modulation for radio, aside from sparks and just the spark gap transmission and so forth, which is Morse code, which is off or on, um, past that point, we start with an audio signal. This is an audio signal of some kind right here. This is a signal coming out of a microphone, okay? Now that signal can't be transmitted because it has to, to transmit, you have to have a high frequency or a higher frequency radio wave signal that will go through the air. So how do you get this audio signal, which is variable and very low in frequency comparatively, and make it carry to another place? The way you do that is you make a waveform that is a carrier wave. And that carrier wave works like this. I have an oscillator, which is an oscillator, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, is a device that makes uh, a periodic signal that's the same frequency. And it's making a sine wave. And so here's the sine wave here. And actually it would be, to carry that signal, it would be a lot more uh, repetitive because you have to have more peaks to sample there to get the signal information. Okay, so here's the carrier wave. Now the way I would actually, well here's a, a, a radio frequency. When I combine these together, I modulate this carrier wave, I come up with this. Trying to copy that as much as possible. Okay, so what I've done is I've changed the amplitude of this carrier wave depending on the audio signal that's modulating it. So that is why this is called amplitude modulation. Here's the carrier wave. Here's the same carrier wave here, but the height or the gain of that signal is changing depending on this audio signal that is modulating it. And all, M, all AM radio transmission depends on this principle. Okay, so that's amplitude modulation. This is AM. Okay. Now, the problem with AM is, let's say there's noise in the environment. Let's say there's a, a spark of noise or something right here. Well, if that noise got in here, that would just make another peak right in there. So that would be noise when you listen to the AM radio. Okay, so it's susceptible to noise. It doesn't use a lot, take a lot of power compared to FM, but it, it'll pick up every noise and then that's interpreted after demodulation. And so you have your signal, then you have noise, like lightning strikes or whatever. <coughs> FM, Armstrong, what he did was he looked at it a whole new way. He said, let's um, find another way of modulating. So what we'll do is we'll have our same audio signal here, like that, okay? And then we'll have our carrier wave here. But what happens in FM 
is when we modulate the carrier wave, what we'll do is we'll have a change of frequency. Like that, okay? So the height of these signals is the same. The amplitude remains the same, but the frequency changes depending on the modulating signal. So, and, and let me give you an illustration to help you understand the difference between AM and FM, okay? <clears throat> if you did it with light, and light's electromagnetic signal, right? Okay, now, if I was looking at an AM modulated light bulb, okay, it would be blinking, it would be the same color, it might just be a red light. It would always be red, but it would be getting brighter and darker and brighter and darker and that would be amplitude modulation but if I was frequency modulating that light bulb it would be the same brightness all the time but it would be blue and red and green and purple and the color would be changing back and forth and so the neat thing about frequency modulation is because it, it, it's varying in frequency, I can chop off the peaks where the noise is. And so no matter what happens in the environment between the transmitter and the receiver, I'm always going to have a clear signal. Okay, and that was a miraculous invention by Armstrong. And we're looking at the waveforms up here. This shows us a better drawing than I made on the whiteboard. Here's the original signal. Here's the carrier wave. Here's amplitude modulation. See the amplitude changing? Here's frequency modulation. Amplitude stays the same, but the frequency changes. So that's the difference between those two types of modulation. And Armstrong was the one who invented the FM. Pretty smart guy. Let's go on a little bit. Now, to be able to make a carrier wave, I have to have something called an oscillator. An oscillator is a device that makes a periodic RF waveform. It could be also an audio oscillator that makes a periodic audio signal. But in this case, we're talking about radio transmitters, so I'm talking about RF oscillator. An oscillator is basically an amplifier with feedback. If I um, Give you an example. I have a uh, microphone here if I wanted to use it. Okay, testing, testing, testing. Now that amplifier is taking the signal from this microphone and it is uh, amplifying it so it can go through a loudspeaker. But if I take this microphone too close to the loudspeaker, what that is causing is a coupling of the output to the input. And so, See up there at the top, it says feedback. If I put this microphone that's an oscillator, okay? I put this microphone by the speaker and that made an oscillator. And so whenever you have an amplifier and you take the output and link it back to the input, it's going to want to oscillate. And depending on the coupling of that of that amplifier from the output to the input, we can determine the frequency and the loudness of the oscillation. But I just made an oscillator using an amplifier. Oscillators are amplifiers with such a large amount of positive feedback, that's feedback from the output back to the input, that they usually pr they produce a periodic waveform, usually a sine wave. The output of this signal is determined by the gain of the amplifier and the coupling of the feedback circuit. Oscillators usually produce sine waves, but they can also produce square waves or tri triangular waves or whatever. But uh, we can control the frequency of an oscillator by putting an LC circuit. Remember I showed you an LC circuit earlier? The resistant, I mean the uh, inductive capacitive circuit coupled between the output of the amplifier feeding back into the amplifier if I have a tuned circuit, I can control the frequency of the oscillator. Okay? Going on. This is a drawing of a transistor oscillator. Um, 
it's a, again, it's an electronic circuit that produces an output signal of a specific frequency. Now, let's take a look at this drawing. <clears throat> Up here, we've got what's called a tank circuit. It consists of a capacitor and an inductor. The capacitor is variable. This arrow through that drawing means it's a variable capacitor. The value of this capacitor and the value of this inductor, when they're coupled together in this tank circuit, uh, determine a resonant frequency. Once that is a resonant, reaches resonance because it's energized by a voltage from up here, it's making a small sine wave, which is, you're taking your output of your, of your amplifier, this is your output, and you're coupling it back through a tank circuit, decoupling DC here, and then injecting it back to here. And so, this is feedback, but the frequency of feedback is regulated by this tuned circuit. And so that allows us to make an oscillator that produces a very specific frequency. And because it's a variable capacitor, we can adjust the frequency of that oscillator. This is the feedback loop right here. This is the amplifier. This is the output. This is the voltage supply. Any questions on that? Okay, thanks. Let's go on. And I think that was, was it a coal pits. Does that have a name? I think that's a coal pits, but I'll have to look it up. <clears throat> Here's another. This is a Tesla coil oscillator. And what happens in here is we have an amplifier tube. And this is the heater that electrons flow from. So you have to have a transformer here that heats up this heater in this, but it also is a source for electrons to flow. But what happens here is when electrons flow up through here, they go to this tank circuit, an uh, inductor and a capacitor. And then they have a, you know, a voltage coming back to here through this transformer to allow us to have power over here. And so this is a frequency, this controls frequency, but here's another coil coupled with that one. And this coil induces a signal back into here, which then feeds this. And so the feedback is coming from here through to there. But because of this large amount of turns on this side here, we're making a very high voltage. This is a Class C Armstrong Tesla-based um, transmitter. And because of the huge number of coils on L3 here, the output uh, winding on this transformer, we're making a very high voltage which goes up to an antenna. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Let's talk about basic AM transmitters. Do you need to take a break?